everybody, and welcome to the second episode of Kung Fu Tweaks, a documentary web series that chronicles my spastic attempts at trying to learn traditional Kung Fu. As you may have guessed, I am Tweaks, I'm also known as Brian, and today we have a very special episode for you. For those of you who saw episode one, I said that in a relatively short amount of time, a new student can actually begin seeing great changes and improvements in their Kung Fu. Well, this episode, I want to show you just what I mean. You see, after my very first class in Kung Fu, I came home and I filmed myself performing the various techniques that I had learned in class. While I would love to say that I filmed myself because I knew that one day I would make the most epically awesome web series in the world, the reality is that I filmed myself because my memory was bad and I didn't want to forget what I had learned in class. But the good news, you get to see it. To make it even better, just the other night I filmed myself performing the same drills, exercises, and forms so that I can show you side by side just how much I have improved and by extension another student can improve. However, there was a problem. I wanted to find a way to showcase all of these clips without just randomly jumping from one to the next. And that's when my genius kicked in. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you through the typical class that a brand new Kung Fu student would go through and I'm gonna use these clips to help me do it. Let's get going. Now when a new student starts at the Institute, they almost always start in the very first class that we offer, which is called the Foundations class. As the name suggests, this class is all about teaching the fundamental skills and techniques that we use in every part of Kung Fu. When I say every part, I mean every single part. Now each class is generally broken up into a few key sections. We almost always start each class with Tai Chi and meditation. Then after a brief warm up and some stretching, we then move into Kung Fu. After Kung Fu, we then spend the rest of the class working on our Sanda, San Shao, or freeform fighting. These classes generally last up to an hour, so let's jump right in. First up, Tai Chi. Now the Tai Chi is all about breathing. We learn how to breathe where to send the breath, and how to control it. The beginning movements that you see me doing are designed to help me open up my body and to let the air flow in and out as much as possible. And this time is also used as a time of meditation so that we can begin learning how to focus our minds and get rid of all of the outside distractions. You see, when we train, it is of the utmost importance that we stay completely focused on our task at hand. Otherwise, we run a high risk of injuring ourselves or our fellow classmates. Through proper and correct meditation, we actually reduce that risk almost to zero. But Tai Chi is also about learning to control our body and its movement. You see, since most of the movements in Tai Chi are slow and methodical, we begin to learn control and balance of our bodies almost immediately. In the five months since my training began, my breathing has become more controlled and regulated. I've learned how to send the breath to the proper places in my body, and I've learned to meditate better even with more distractions around me. And probably the most important for me is that my body has been able to relax, and I'm finding myself to be more focused than ever before. Now after a quick warm up with some stretching, we move into our Kung Fu. The very first technique that we learn is something called stretch kicks. These help us gain strength, balance, and flexibility, as well as teaching us some of the very first movements in our first forms. Typically, we focus on the first two kicks that a student will learn. Those kicks are the front stretch kicks and the outside stretch kicks. As you can see, my front stretch kicks have gotten much better. My balance, my control, my power, and my flexibility have remarkably improved. The even greater improvement comes with my outside stretch kicks. Now after our kicks, we then transition seamlessly into learning our very first form that we call Shaolin 1. Just in the very first movements of this form, we learn major foundational techniques, such as key stances that we use in pretty much every form that we do how to transition from one stance to the other, and we also begin to learn how to use our lower body in tandem with our upper body. For a beginner, these movements, while they do look easy, are actually murder on our legs because we're using muscles that most of us don't use on a regular basis. Now when you compare the two different videos, you are going to see a myriad of improvements. You'll notice that my stances are stronger with better footing. My back is straighter. My arms and shoulders, even though I am punching, are relaxed, and the power is coming from my hip, and not my arm. My balance is better, and my stances are more stable. And the uncertainty that you see in my movements after my first class have all but now disappeared, and these movements have actually become part of my muscle memory. In other words, I can do them without thinking about them. 
After working through the forms for a little while, we take what we have learned already in Tai Chi and Kung Fu, and we begin to apply it in Sanda, San Shao, or our free fighting. This is all about the self-defense. This is about learning to use our bodies to exert the maximum amount of force while using the least amount of effort. Even though throwing a punch may seem easy, doing it correctly actually involves multiple different movements that have to happen simultaneously. When you watch me five months ago, you're gonna see that I'm stiff and that I'm tense. I'm dropping my guard when I'm punching or dodging, which is also known as slipping. I'm unsteady on my feet and my balance isn't all that great. However, when you see how I now move when I punch or I slip, you can see that my movements are more relaxed, powerful, and sturdy. This growth and improvement has come with many hours of practice, both in and out of class. And that, boys and girls, is an end to a Foundations class. I've said it before and I'm gonna say it again. Everything that we learn in the Foundations class are techniques that we are constantly and consistently using in all aspects of our training. If we learn the Foundations incorrectly, it greatly hinders our ability to learn the more advanced movements down the road. These are so crucial that I have to work on them on a daily basis, and I am still far from perfect. However, despite my imperfections, I hope you guys have really enjoyed seeing my first attempts at Kung Fu and to see how far I've already come. Which brings us to the end of this episode. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you like the show, be sure to give that little thumbs up button down there a clickety clack. If you didn't like the show, be sure to tell me why in the comments below and I will promptly ignore it. I'm just kidding. I'll just delete them. All kidding aside, let me know what you think below. If there's something in particular you want to see in the future, let me know and I will see what I can do. But until next time, my name is Tweaks, this has been Kung Fu Tweaks, and I will see you guys next time. Zaijin.